the local supply chain industry can benefit a lot from digital. Uh, for example, there is electronic uh, proof of delivery, which can, if utilized, it can improve your cash flows because it allows you then to confirm delivery very quickly. You can send your invoice very quickly. And thereafter, then you've got your cash flows uh, flowing, flowing in the way you want them to. And the other opportunities that can be harnessed is in terms of the data we've been collecting over the years. There is intelligence that's lying in the data. There is route optimization. There is the ability to say to your customer, you're already with us this long for this kind of delivery. What if we add additional services onto the current service that you already have? And also, maybe the last mile delivery be added to an existing service, and we now deliver even to the doorstep of your customer. The challenges in implementing digital in the local supply chain industry is probably coming from existing legacy systems as well. The recent um, CIO survey that was done by IT Web is reflecting that CIOs are still complaining and they are seeing a rise in response in terms of the burden of legacy systems. So there is a way that as CIOs, we need to find a way to maybe implement using a bimodal way of doing business, which Gartner has been preaching for years. And I don't know why we haven't gotten it right. But the other thing that CIOs highlighted was that there is a challenge in terms of harnessing even the innovation, because the CIO is not viewed as an innovator in any of the companies. So the critical path now is that how best do we learn how to run with this new way of working, which allows us to fail, and we need to learn to fail fast. For example, now in Las Vegas, the first driverless shuttle crashed. And it's like everybody's discouraged now to, to look at digital in the, in the right way. But every invention has had some sort of failure. And we're going to have to learn to fail, and we need to learn to fail very fast. And I think our industry and, and our local industry is not yet ready for such kind of uh, way of working. We are wired in a way where we work from. These are the re business requirements. This is where we are going. But now we need to look at what technologies can we try and test them and see whether they respond to customer requirements that we already have or respond to some of the challenges, business challenges that we are already experiencing. In some cases, we have a culture challenge. For example, we have transporters who are still highly keen on ensuring that they use spreadsheets and they plan and they work around their spreadsheets. They're comfy with the spreadsheets, but they're not ready yet to adopt uh, new ways of working uh, to improve the way they work. And in all fairness, the industry indeed has got different it's got varying maturity levels in terms of uh, big players who are able to use uh, robust systems. And when you bring digital solution to this level of uh, maturity, they are fine. They can accept digital, but the other areas will battle to accept what you bring into the table. So I think there is a culture change that needs to go in. And bearing in mind that some of our, uh, the people that are playing in this market, they, they come with a simplicity approach. And therefore, there has to be a, a, a value proposition. And we need to acknowledge and accept that supply chain industry is a highly, highly disrupted. And if we don't wake up, we are going to be irrelevant. I mean, you need to learn from the, the, the Uber uh, change across the transportation industry and already realize that that translates even to logistics and also to supply chain in general. Technologies are interesting. So the one that is more interesting for me is the smart beans, simply because smart matter is part of the Balo World flagship. We need to know when the bean is full. We need to know that the bean belongs to the owner or to this house or to this company. So smart beans, definitely on the radar. The other one is uh, driverless uh, trucks. We are in the trucking business, so it makes sense that we are watching because in South African context, we really would not like to uh, go that fast into driverless trucks. Not because we don't like technology, but we do have socioeconomic issues of saving jobs. And as Balo World, we are committed to improving the communities we live in. And the other technology that I would 
maybe consider would be blockchain. But on that one, I'm a former regulatory CIO, so I'm waiting to hear what the financial services regulators are saying about how we're going to regulate this monster. Because now it's no longer about regulating the money that's exchanging hands, you're regulating the technology. The two industries are highly challenged in terms of women representation. And what Ballo World is doing is that in our graduates and internship programs, we really are targeting women who are specifically geared at growing in logistics and also in the fields of IT. And this is to ensure that there is a pool of talent that, that we can tap into and those that really can bring us new ideas, considering the fact that it's a digital era. These people are digital natives. So bringing them on board, you're injecting the digital injection that Ballo World as an old company does really require because they do what we call reverse coaching. They coach us on what technologies are out there that we can utilize in order to remain competitive. But as a whole, as a country, we do need to make more effort. The little that Ballo World is doing is not enough. As visionary CIO 2014, I find myself challenged that there are no previous winners who are women except one. And on the IT personality of the year as well, there are no female winners. And that's not because there are not amazing women who are doing amazing work in IT. I was fortunate enough to be a judge and I got to listen to these amazing stories of amazing things that women are doing out there. Some are CEOs of, of fintechs. Some are really running girl programs to try and bring girls into IT. But it's still not enough, and we need to do more to bring the country on board. And the reason why you would need women to be on board in terms of IT is that, like any other industry, you need a, div a diversity of skills because we bring different strength. Women bring different strength. Men dif bring different strength. And when you only have a one-sided strength, it will always make this industry not attainable. And the message we're sending to our children is to say, you need to be a man to succeed in this industry. And that is not the truth. We can make it. And I do believe that as a country, we need to continue to support these efforts that are in place to try and bring more ladies on board and support the ones that are already playing a role in impacting our community, communities using technology. One of my biggest dreams when I grew up was that when I get to some level where I can influence the world, I want to go back to my village and make sure that the kids who grow up in that village will never go through what I've gone through, where I had to learn how to use a computer at tertiary level. So I've gone back and I made that commitment on SAFM interview a few years back. And funny enough, a few years later, I was back and I had computers and I drop them off at the primary school. And the primary school decided they're gonna get a tutor and now kids are learning computers at a primary level. As if that's not enough, when I won Visionary CIO 2014, IT Web gave me cash to the amount of 25,000 for to the charity of my choice. And I told them I need a library at the primary school. So that money was channeled to buy books for the library. And Barrow World decided to donate old furniture that was used in the library. So now, this year, we opened that library. So I have a primary school in Matangari village, which has a computer lab and a library. And I am doing my piece to ensure that the young women in that village will never be the same again. And I hope that the recognition that IIT Web and the IIT PSA and Ballo World has done to ensure that we do impact our, our communities is highlighted so that other employers and other communities and other industry bodies can support these causes.